is up, everyone? Welcome back to the J&J Power Hour. We took a break because, well, I needed a break. I'm on a constant content burnout. I still kind of <laughs> am. Um, and just a lot is happening, which we're going to get into um, in a second. But holy moly, I wasn't really planning to take a near month break, but... I mean, it wasn't any fault of yours, JPJ. It was all me. But how? How's life? You know, life is life is pretty good. Still a little hectic, you know. The world is still the crazy world we live in, but um, it's good, man. It's good. I've been, you know, WrestleMania season from the wrestling standpoint of things. So that usually jacks it up a little bit. Some. I'm sure we're going to talk about mania considering it's mania week. So yeah. I'll save, I'll save my opinions until we start really diving in, but there's been good and bad, but to me, I got kind of a new setup yeah, you going do. on here. I'm hoping to be joining you in the streaming content world starting this week, later this week. So um, yeah, I kind of up my set here. I got a new computer, a couple new monitors, some new lights and stuff. So I've been doing that. I know I've been talking to you off camera mm. saying that I've been wanting to do this for like a little bit now, but mm. I finally bit the bullet and did it this last while we were away. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, setting up my own Twitch, kind of getting that thing rolling. And hopefully we'll be doing that on top of all the love wrestling stuff and this getting back on track. Like, yeah, man, I, I'm excited. It's a lot. You know, it's time consuming, as you can tell. Obviously, you just, you know, said that you needed a little bit of a break, mm. but like. I'm excited to ramp up and try it. I think I'm optimistic. I think that naturally I have a good personality that can mm -hmm. get a good group of people to follow, you know, follow me or be in my chat and stuff like that. I'm surrounded by good people who have way more knowledge in the game than I do, you being one of them. So I've had some people kind of helping me along the way. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to do this again with you too, because it's yeah. been a while. So yeah, we've, we haven't just shut it up like shot the shit yeah like before you know this show chat before really. or whatever like we haven't done that in a yeah. while either so it's we it's really nice haven't to, to get back on we no really, like occasionally once, you know but... it's not like we haven't like talked this yeah. whole time but like the the majority of the time we talk talk is before and after or during when we're yeah doing our this. recording sessions um, guys aren't just like the hour that we have of the show it's usually a like half an yeah, hour before no. and then an hour sometimes two after of just just Hanging out, like we usually kind of hanging out, yeah, on depending on what just, we got going on. Yeah, exactly. And just do exactly. do nothing. But yes, JPJ's upgraded his setup. Oh, I've been saying this for the longest time, but now that he's upgraded his setup and stuff like that, and he's a little bit more familiar, he's actually going to be able to come and hang out with me on stream. So he would just hang out yes. in the in the call and just watch me bullshit on on whatever, or play some games or whatever. I'm finally going to get him into the AFL thing. I'm going to yep. do it. I'm going to play an AFL game with JPJ and just. He can just watch me for a couple of hours and be in the call and just have a good time and we can just bullshit. I showed JPJ a clip from you did. the it was AFL a good one too. the other day. It was, a, it was quite the clip. Yeah. yeah. So for anyone that's not in Australia, Australians will know what I'm going to say as soon as that word AFL come out of my mouth. But a, a player named Buddy Franklin, he's a well-known AFL player. He's one of the best um, currently doing it. Um, for the sixth time in AFL history, Someone kicked a thousand goals and they had this moment where he was lining up and, you know, people were like, okay, he's on 999 goals. Yeah, Here gonna, we go. Let's go do this. It. This is going to happen. And he yeah. kicked the goal and then the literal stadium of people just ran onto the footy oval and just surrounded him. It was this big moment of like, like it made the, my arm hairs stand up. I was like, wow. Yeah. And I'm not like live breathe football like i like footy i would guess you call a casual football fan i watch it sometimes i keep up with it but like i don't mm -hmm. know everyone's name I, I i you know i just know the basics but like i i know who buddy franklin is and even when i show jpj that clip he doesn't really he you've watched very little in your life of afl yeah um but you're a sport guy and you understand you're like well that's a pretty significant thing and i showed JPJ, yeah. yeah and he was like whoa like that's pretty cool just to see this is our country's bread and butter this is our country sport yeah. for the most part um so yeah just to see something like that happen is cool so i will get jpj into a stream when i and i'll play the afl game and i can kind of show him the ropes of afl because it is available to watch in the states i know that it's available to watch in the states so it's not mm -hmm. like it's it's a, a foreign well it's foreign i guess but like a concept that isn't <laughs> av available to you guys and jpj is a sport guy way more than i am so just to get him into another sport. And I'd be like, this is a taste of Australian culture. It lives in Australian mm. history. But yeah, that clip was 
wild. You can just search it up, everybody. Just type in AFL Buddy Franklin or AFL 1,000th goal, and you will see it will be all over YouTube. It is a – I'm not even overhyping it when I say it's a pretty remarkable thing of, like, not oh, just yeah. the, the significance of the actual thing itself. I mean, like, just the moment of, like, everyone can relate to that, of just, like, the whole – we're in a COVID time, by the way, too. This is the first season mm-hmm. of AFL back with like full crowds and like able to actually have a full season without, you know, COVID interruptions for the most part. It was just like such a foreign concept to see that many people in one space, but it was cool. Yeah. It was really, yeah. it was a really cool moment. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, you know, of crowds rushing the field like that usually a lot of times in American sports, it'll happen with like big upsets. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, usually in the college ranks of sorts, like you'll have like a a highly ranked team lose to a team they shouldn't lose to. And that's the excuse for the call, the college kids that are at the game to be like, Oh yeah, huge. Let's go. We're storming the field. We're going to, you know, so I've seen stuff like that, but for the overall achievement of, and especially when you say, I mean, I'm assuming Australian, football afl has been around for a, a good while 125 years okay so for only six dudes to do that that's impressive like that's yeah. i'm assuming thousands and thousands of men have played afl and if only six in your 120 years have done that feat that is a remarkable feat so i'll never we'll never see know, it again in this lifetime that's the kind of thing probably that yeah that, that's what it seems like you know so what i mean like, so it's one of those things where it's a big deal because big like deal. I, I don't know how it is for um the nfl in the states but a footballer's lifespan here is not like you know forever tw- it's not for it's you know it's a pretty you're yeah. in your 20s you're in your 30s and then you just kind of like any athlete yeah you become yeah with age it just gets harder and harder to stay mm-hmm. up. you can't keep time. up with a 20 year old guy if he's you know you know fit and all this and he's young and fresh and ready to play and the Mm -hmm. game just evolves too of stuff like that as as humans progress so it is pretty cool to witness that in my lifetime and especially for someone again who's not like hardcore into sports it's like that's still a pretty significant deal as it's like i just i was keeping up with that game on twitter because it wasn't any of it wasn't an adelaide team that was in that game and i was just kind of like cool keep up with the score and then i seen that and i'm like holy moly like i knew that was coming up but like that's just a pretty significant thing to bear witness to so yeah my mission for this show if anything to take away from this show is to just get jpj up to date and, and understand the rules of an AFL game and stuff like that. And just open him up to more sports than just, you know, yeah. I mean, you said it, I, I love sports, mm-hmm. so I don't think it'll be hard to get me <laughs> into it. I am. And I know you and I are both competitive. Mm-hmm. So like, it's not the main reason I like sports, but the competitive, like you're talking about the greatest athletes, male or female in the world mm-hmm. at the highest level of competitiveness Mm -hmm. and to me that that to me is just like it's the per like the drama that comes with sports just everything the best you know because it's you know and we we talk about wrestling we we're into drama i like drama movies tv shows wrestling entertainment whatever but sport is real like that's real there's no you know and people will make arguments that shit's fixed and blah 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 but like sports is real like what you watch you watch a baseball game it's real. You're watching real drama. It's real time. Football, it's, Australians, it's, it's, real time. Yeah. You're watching real drama unfold in front of you. Yeah. And when sport has moments like that moment you shared with me and other historic moments, no matter the sport, no matter the country, like those moments you get are it. drama. You understand it instantly. Yes. You go, I get why. I don't understand anything else about the sport, but I yeah. understand that that's significant because of the way people react. It's, it's infectious, that kind of thing. Yeah. I've seen... I don't know the rules of the NFL. I've watched zero whole games in my life, but I understand when a significant thing happens because of course, like I, I, I sports is a very, as much as I'm not a sport person per se, sports is a very universal thing where you just understand the concept of something because yeah. the idea of any sport is to win and it's everybody win. understands the concept of winning. It doesn't matter what mm-hmm. you're trying to win in. So I think that's why sports is always something that's looked at. And, you know, I know a lot of people 
when we went through initially with COVID, a lot of people were like, sports aren't essential. Me included. I'm like, sports are not essential. We don't have to play them. But I understand why people were so late because it's something that we all can just bond over is sport. Whether you yeah. hate it or love it, you can bond I over mean, it because you understand the concept of it. So I get it. Yeah. And I uh, speaking from the American side of things, when COVID first happened and everything stopped, when sports started again, yeah, there were no fans and like the NBA just went to a bubble where everyone just played in the same arena. Yeah. So they were all together. Same here. I get that. But when sports started again and you could put on ESPN or you could put on a sports channel and watch I'm from Boston. So watch the Boston Red Sox play a baseball game or watch the Boston Celtics play a basketball game like that made life feel normal yeah, a little bit. Yes, did. the environment was different. There were no crowds, you know, not a lot of cheerleaders, not a lot of people on the bench like usual. Yes, the environment was different, but like you were still the core it of made it was you still feel there. normal. The core of everything yeah. was still the same. I was rooting for the Boston Red Sox just like I root for the Boston Red Sox, whether there's 37,000 people at the stadium or zero. Yeah. You know, no, like it's I the still same had that feeling it. of like, oh shit, like this, it, this at least feels a little normal so sports coming back were big for us this country at the very least like once basketball started again and all these things started again it was kind of it, it we knew we were far away from normal um but it gave you that it just was the first part where it was like okay i just came home from work I'm going to put on a baseball game and watch a baseball game for a few hours. This feels like somewhat of a normal day, even though everything around me is the furthest thing from normal. You know what I mean? So yeah. sports no, were very important in that. So Same same here. When AFL first come back, it was like no crowds to small crowds to now we're back to somewhat normal yeah. size arenas and stadiums. Um, it's cool because the, the beauty of AFL as opposed to maybe basketball, is that like NFL, it's open field. It's an open stadium. Yeah. So like outdoors, you can yeah. get more, you can get away with more people in an open outdoor stadium mm -hmm. than you could in an arena. So like, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty insane. Just pretty insane to have that. You know, this is the first season because AFL season is, we're going into our winter. So AFL has played through the autumn to the spring. So like we don't have it in summer. Um, that's when cricket mm -hmm. season is. And I fucking hate cricket with yeah, all my like fucking heart. I know that. And I know some that. Australians will come at me with that because it's a very, <laughs> it's a very Aussie thing to do is like cricket, but I fucking hate cricket. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> um, but footy, I have no problem with If Someone wants to watch the footy. I'm all there. And if there's an Adelaide Crows game on as much as the Adelaide Crows are doing fucking awful. And they're just, but you still root for them. Cause that's your home. Of course team. they're your team, but they're yeah, fucking they're they're not doing well these last few years they're not yeah. good um but you know you just you wear your afl you wear your crows jersey and you're like yeah. let's go you gotta go through the bad you gotta go through the bad times to appreciate the good times that's a life thing but in mm -hmm. sports like i in boston we've had a good run the last couple decades with the teams but before that, the first, and again, I'm going to sound like a spoiled brat. There's people from Boston that waited 70 years to walk, to see somebody win shit, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to sound like a spoiled brat, but the first 17, 18 years of my life, my teams didn't win a shit. Oh, they didn't win a thing. Trust they me. They didn't win a thing. Trust me, my guy. We, Adelaide Crows were in the premiership, the grand final a few years back. Uh, we lost. Yeah. The last premiership the Adelaide Crows won was in 96. They did 95 yeah. and 96 so one, back to back. Yeah. That's, that's, that's when I was approaching born. 30 years. Yeah, we're, we're approaching 30 years there. <laughs> yeah. So like the, the Boston Red Sox, they won in 2004 for the first time, and they've won three other times since then. But before 2004, and the, and the Red Sox for a long time were the number one team in this town. The Patriots be, in football, because they've just been so good for so long, kind of overtook them a little bit. But the Red Sox were always – the city lived and died by the Boston Red Sox. And before 2004, their championship before that was in 1918. Yeah, exactly. So you've the yeah. curse that we had, we had a whole nickname, Curse of the Bambi. We had all this shit, miserable things. There was a curse and all this and that. They didn't win forever. There are people that went to their graves without seeing the Red Sox win. Lifelong fans, you know? Ugh. And for me to sound like, well, you know, I didn't see one until I was 17. Like, I sound like a baby. But, like, yeah, man, that's what – and, like, Boston is a very much 
we're a major city. We have a sports team in all four major American sports. And we are super – Boston in general, New England is just very passionate people. I've heard the general. term Boston strong because they're Boston very – Boston strong, yeah. yeah. Like we are very passionate people in general. But when it comes to sports, it's part of – you know, if you grew up in a sports family, which I did, both my parents were diehard sports. That's how I was ra- – that's how you're raised. Like it's in yeah, my blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Red Sox might as well be my cousin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's how I feel. Yeah. Like I will – argue i will fight i will mm-hmm. do whatever i will defend my team like they are my fan like that's just how i operate yeah and you got to go through the shit to actually like you know really like when they finally win it's like holy crap you know? oh god like when the red sox won the world series in 2004 like i witnessed my parents cry yeah like that's how that's how much it meant like holy shit i never thought i would actually see this because they were in their mid 40s or whenever the hell it was when they when it happened and they were like i never thought i would see this and they finally won and there were old people crying everywhere like it was just like four million people showed up to the parade when the red sox were. it's four sport million a, people sport sport you know? is a, a crazy i as i've gotten older when i was a kid and when i was uh, much as i was raised around sport like my dad and my older brother were like very sport driven um, mm-hmm. I wasn't like into sports as a kid. I never was. Um, I played tennis for a hot minute for a little while. Um, but I didn't really love tennis. I just liked playing tennis. There's a difference between playing mm-hmm. and watching. Um, but I wasn't like a sport kid, but as I've gotten older, weirdly enough, as I've came out, I don't know fucking why that goes hand in hand, <laughs> but it just has. I've just yeah. been like football, 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 not to like fucking look at the hot football players. Some of them are, but like, it's not that it's like, I watch wrestling. I don't watch wrestling because there's hot, attractive people. I watch it because I like it. It's weird yeah. how that's just gone kind of hand in hand. I'm like, I've kind of gotten into this at a weird later stage in life than like, you know, teenager of like, oh, sport. I want to be a football player. Oh, yeah. Teenagers like, those years yeah. where you just obsess with everything, yeah. like everything you yeah. like, you just obsess over, yeah. you know? Uh, so yeah, but they, they better I don't know why. Uh, better yeah, late than exactly. Never, so know? I'm getting, I'm, I've the last few years and obviously I've known it for a long time. I just haven't been like, into it as much as I have been in this part of state, uh, this part of my life, but whatever. Yeah. Um, a few more things before we dive into WrestleMania week talk. Um, we haven't been here for a little while, so there's some things to catch up on. There's some things that have been going on in the time, um, since we've been, since we've been gone, you've started a, a, a watch along, um, on love wrestling for, um, dynamite, which I was yep. on a few weeks back. We were on an episode. Just yeah. kind of a chill, like any kind of watch along chill time, just kind of watching yep. dynamite. Um, mm-hmm. I officially am a part of 2k next makers now, which is really freaking cool. Um, to be awesome. associated with 2k in some small capacity, but still, a, still something in general. That's a lot of fun yeah. to, um, do. And of course, 2K22 came out, WWE 2K22. And we both have had a blast with that game. Like it's it been, rules. it does, it's got its rules. issues, like, like any 2K course, every game. game well, every, yeah. 2K but, uh, especially are bad for that kind of stuff with crashes and just bugs that are kind of like, mm-hmm. yeah. but mm-hmm. I will say that the core gameplay of that game is a lot of damn fun. Like actually have fun mm-hmm. playing a wrestling game again. This might yeah. be my favorite wrestling game ever. I'm not even actually joking. It's been a little while yeah. now since it's sunk in and, and actually allowed to kind of like, you know, actually assess it from like a, a fresh standpoint. Like it's actually, mm. I played it, I've assessed it. I've let it kind of dimmer, like simmer down with the kind of, Oh, it's new. Um, yeah. and it's fun. Like it's fun to play the AI. It's fun to play with friends. Like GM yeah. mode is fun. Um, you know, it's, it is, it's a lot of fun. So I'm glad that we finally got a wrestling game that actually seems like it's, it's a good foundation to build upon to now. Build. Like, so now when we the get... rumor is that they might be leaving Mm-mm. 2k and going to eat. I can oh, tell you. Okay. I know that was the rumor that they might be heading to eat towards EA or some shit like that, but I hope not. They signed a new Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay good, good. They're, they're fine they're they're more than fine um it, i think this was i think this few weeks from my understanding was that if it did shit and everyone was like this game they is terrible out. they were out but i yeah. think i think this I mean, was just like a just like a hey we're good like we've got a good foundation let's continue on yeah i think they're I'm, fine you i mean you can understand that 2020 was an unmitigated disaster Oh, that game. You know what I mean? That bad. game, it was unplayable. It, it was, was so bad. I played 2K19 for the last four years because... Yeah, because, because 2020, it, when you just couldn't. 2K20 you know? was so that, the worst game. There was some funniness oh, yeah. about it. Don't get me wrong. On stream, that game was fun to play because it was just... It didn't work. Like, it, did, yeah, it was for the wrong exactly. reasons. But, like, 
it was just unplayably bad. Like you couldn't get through yeah. matches without it crashing. Like, and there is, I've admittedly only had that game crash to me a couple of times. Um, I know there was a big bug with 2K22 with like certain mm. logos and stuff like that. They fixed that. Um, and universe mode seems to be still, a little, it's just ported over from 2K20. So yeah, um, something, but again, you can't expect to have every mode completely new when they're revamping. A, they built this game from the ground up. Essentially, it's a whole new yeah. engine. The core mechanics of this game works really well though. Like it's a lot of I fun agree. to play. Yeah. And I think. Matters. Yeah, at the end of the day, like, don't get me wrong. I want the modes to be plentiful and I want oh, the modes yeah. to be robust and great, but you're not all going to do that in one year. And I understand they had two because technically they didn't release a 21. I get it. But when you're rebuilding something from bottom, especially a video game, like you're going to have to focus on thing, on certain things over the other. And clearly they wanted to focus on gameplay and AI As it and things be. like that. Yes, like you can play, you can go on there, and I usually play on hard. I don't play on the hardest, but oh, I, I play on I hard. I play on legend. Okay, so I play on hard. I want a little bit of a challenge. Those matches are legit. They feel like you are in your play, like you're in a wrestling match. Like it's very smooth. The transitions are good. Like it's not choppy or like, yes, there are bugs and glitches occasionally, but when you're just having a match, like if you just pick two random wrestlers yeah. and you're like, I'm just gonna play a match at 2k22, it plays out and they're always like a like, friggin' wrestling yeah, match. They, you're like, you know what good I mean? Matches like there's lots of kickouts, there's lots of yeah, um, there's lots of like falsies and stuff like that. It's like a lot of yeah. fun to play. And I don't know if you've been able to sit down with friends or anything and play this game, but multiplayer, not online, I don't the Australian servers on that game are fucking cooked. They don't work properly because we have shitty internet. But um, to sit down, like, couch local co-op play and mm. play with friends is a lot of damn fun. Like, everyone's having a good time. It's competitive, but not to the point where it's, like, not fun. Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a good time, which is what I want out of a wrestling game. Yes, modes, Oof. of course, are very important. Like, my GM is limited, but still a lot of fun. That game, mm -hmm. that, that mode is still a lot of fun. It's a good oh, yeah, I... core base to, as long as they keep building on that and adding stuff because it is very limited. Um, universe mode needs a complete like fucking blow up start again. Like because it's just, makeover, it's yeah. just broken. Um, my Rise, I haven't really done that much of, really, but it is fun what I played of it. Yeah. Showcase is not my thing. It's just personal preference. I don't love those modes, but it's done really well this year. Um, well, I was it's gonna say, hard though. Oh my god, I get frustrated in that thing. I want to throw the <laughs> controller. Is the this thing. again? I obviously I didn't play twenty because the reviews are just Fuck so that, bad. Yeah. I just didn't even buy it. Is this the first time that they've kind of like in the showcase mode? Halfway through the match, they show real like yeah, it goes in between time, yeah. gameplay and yeah. real life, and because mm -hmm. obviously there are real life clips and things you it's that i remember watching like they but they like when it's in it. the match yeah. with like ray talking yeah. and then okay because i i actually i thought that was pretty slick when i it first too. when it first but started i was like oh this is a, this is pretty cool i, the way I, I get this, it you know? i get the mode and for people that like that stuff i think it's done fantastically i just don't like that you like do a strike. Here's a cutscene. Yeah, you have. Yeah, do it like pin. tells you. Like, here's you, a cutscene. Yeah, do I'm a front like, grapple in front of the. In and front no matter of the stairs. what you do, no matter what you do, when there's an objective, for some reason in my brain, I'm like, no matter what I fucking do, this motherfucker is going to reverse me, and I'm not yeah, going to be able to get this be, thing. Yeah. I got yeah, stuck on yeah. this JBL match. Oh my god! I tried like six or seven times to get past this JBL match, and I'm like, I just want to unlock the shit because I'm so sick of doing this, and it was just like <laughs> stupid shit, and I'm just like. Fuck. And I'm just a very impatient person and yeah, showcase isn't yeah. my isn't my thing. But I understand if it is and again, done done pretty well. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's a lot of fun that game. So I'm glad that mm. we were able I'm glad that when I took a break, I kind of did it a little intentionally, a little not intentionally. I had kind of a way to get out of the content thing for a minute and just kind of chill and just play that game and and yeah. and, and zone out for a little bit. Um so but now that kind of that's kind of worn off and it's like, okay, it's just a game in my rotation now. I feel like I can get back to some things. Another thing that's happening with me is that amongst all of this bullshit, um, with content burnout, I have to move house because of reasons. Not that I'm getting evicted or anything. Mm -hmm. My owners just want to sell this house, so I have to get out. So in less than a month's time, I got to move house. So I'm under a lot of pressure of just like trying to get this. It's WrestleMania season. I feel like 
I want to still produce, I'm still streaming. I'm still producing stuff. I'm still editing stuff for people. I'm still doing a lot of shit on top of trying to pull apart my house because I need to pull apart my house and, and get ready mm. to move. I need to move. I, the, the money stress of that, of having, cause my, is, moving is expensive. Um, doing all that. It's like, holy shit. There's just a lot going on. It's going to be a very busy month, uh, for me, but at least this weekend we can kind of just, well, at least for me, it's going to be a couple of days of just like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to sit down mm -hmm. in front of my TV. I'm going to watch freaking WrestleMania. Two mm -hmm. months ago, we said after the rumble, I don't really feel that excited for WrestleMania at that point. A lot has changed. They've done a lot. The builds to some things have been way better than the builds to others. We're not going to focus yep. too much on the negatives. Um, we'll, we'll touch on it, but let's talk some WrestleMania. Let's talk some WrestleMania memories. Let's talk some lead up to this year's WrestleMania. Let's just talk WrestleMania. That's why this this week is the perfect week to come back. It's WrestleMania week. As, as of time of recording, we're recording just before Raw. So again, there's going to be stuff that happens on Raw that may change the trajectory of WrestleMania. But I don't think too much will change. I think there's going to be a pretty standard go-home edition of Raw. Lots of tag matches. Smackdown I see you. people there for some reason. You it's know? WrestleMania whatever. Raw or whatever they're calling it. But like, it's fine. Like, I have no issue with that. At all, just let's get to WrestleMania and, and blah, 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 blah. But before we talk this year's WrestleMania, let's talk WrestleMania in general. There is a certain, even with maybe a, the last few months of being like, eh, it's, it's WrestleMania time. Every year it seems to get a little less exciting in the sense of like the build up to it. But when you're mm -hmm. in WrestleMania week, we're getting closer. I'm like, okay, it's WrestleMania time. There's going to yeah. be people here. I'm going to be watching WrestleMania. It's a fun couple of days. I yep. think we're both in agreement. I believe you're in the same boat as me. I wish it was one night instead of two. I'd prefer a long WrestleMania to do short ones, but that's just me in general. But this is the way it's going now. Two night mm -hmm. WrestleManias are going to be a thing going forward. So what's the point of complaining about it? I'm still going to watch it anyway. Um, but WrestleMania yeah. memories. I mean, let's just get this one out of the way. So then we, because we, everyone knows we're going to talk about WrestleMania 17 because it is looked at <laughs> as the greatest WrestleMania of all time for good reason. Um, mm -hmm. First thing you think of when you think of, when I say WrestleMania 17, without thinking about it, what's the first thing you think of? TLC. Thank you very much, my friend. Because oh, I think I of, yeah, Edge's Edge Spear. But it's the TLC match in general is just perfect. It's a perfect match. It's the best the TLC match, match hands yeah. down. Um, yeah. No disrespect to TLC one or three or four, but like two is the best. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yes, of course, the Edge Spear. Um, to Jeff Hardy is just but like leaders involved. Spike Dudley, they that have a chair they have shot good that Lita does. In. Yeah, where crushes she... Spike. Oh my just like God. that that chair literally folds around his head. Did you watch the um, Lita Broken Skull sessions with Stone Cold? Not yet. Not oh, yet. I won't give yet. you too many spoilers, but they talk about TLC in that. Um, in that, it's a very yeah. good break. I love. Everyone knows I love Lita. Yeah, you I love Lita. Lita. You know me. She's, I love Lita. She gives yeah. a lot of in depth stuff that you haven't heard. They, from. I'm assuming they talk about Edge and Matt. Do they talk about? She doesn't that really talk about Matt too much, but she talks about but the edge thing. The edge thing. They don't really talk about like the the actual personal thing. You know, everyone knows that story. Yeah, they yeah, do. everyone. But knows, they talked yeah. about like different the other side of that of being actual like characters in that situation. I'm like, oh, I never really thought of that that way. Of like what yeah. it was like to play that character, and they talk about her yeah. wedding with Edge and. Um, she's really chill about it. Lita's a very chill human being. She seems like she would be they just talk, a chill conversation. They talk about her as a kid a lot, and um. Cool. Yeah, like her time in Mexico and stuff like that, and obviously coming through the system and and doing what she did, and yeah, and they actually watch her match with Becky from from Elimination Chamber. So, and it was cool to get her perspective on that. I'm like, oh wow, I didn't really think about yeah. it that way. And that's cool. She was thinking. So yeah, um, but yeah, like TLC two is just like a, a masterpiece of a match. It's, it's a, just yeah, it's iconic. Just, but then of course you have to talk about McMahon, um, and Austin. The, the evil mm -hmm. alliance that, that ended the Attitude Era, at least in my opinion, yeah. um, went into the invasion and and that kind of heel run of Stone Cold, which a lot of people look down upon. I think it produced some cool uh, moments, but... Yeah, it had it, has, it had it ups and downs. Him and Kurt were Playing always the, excellent. The, the guitar, yeah. that was yeah, the time. Yeah, we were always excellent together. But yeah, like... Stretch there. And then you had Taker and Triple H. Triple H, of course, is in the news I mean, that's something week. we could... Yeah. Oh my God, I mean, like a, an iconic career, you know, one of the greatest of all time, and... He'll mm -hmm. never do it again because of his, rightfully so, health amongst amongst our selfish reasons yep. of wanting to watch someone wrestle. Um, but pretty 
poetic to have his final two opponents be Batista and Randy Orton. Yeah, it makes sense, right? It makes <laughs> sense. When what? you look back on it, you're like, it's a fitting. It's a it's a fitting full circle end. You he know was what I mean? Pretty, he seemed pretty um at peace with the fact he, that of like oh, yeah. I was already he, kind of zoning yeah, out he, of wrestling. He, exactly. He already like addressed it. Like I had already got there mentally that I wasn't a full time dude anymore. Before like, I just he even had his heart issues. Yeah, I like I just like, did this whatever. here or there when I was needed. And yeah, I mean the part that got me the most of that whole interview was clearly obviously when he got a little. You could tell he got choked mm -hmm. up. When he was talking about going under mm -hmm. the, you know, going under the knife with and his daughters and Steph and being like, you know, there's moments where you're about to go under and you're like, I don't know if, is this it? Like, I don't know if I'm going to wake, you know what I mean? And like, when he meant, you know, when he mentioned about his daughters and he says, you know, they're used to big, strong dad, mm -hmm. they're used to big, strong dad. And, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden big, strong dad wasn't big and strong. You know what I mean? And you could mm -hmm. tell. You, you don't see guys like that. You don't see – when was the last time we truly saw Triple H be emotional like that? Like truly emotional like that? It's, it's been a long time. Yeah, you know? and it was, it was really so, hard to watch that and you'd be like, oh, man, because yeah. we grew up with Triple H. Like I was oh, a child when Triple H yeah. was, was the in thing. And like I will always say that my time is one of my favorite entrance oh, themes amazing. of all time. It's his best theme song. It's um, his best theme song. And like that Triple H's career is – Triple H Cactus Jack at Royal Rumble 2000, the street fight is like Incredible. literally one of the most brutal street fights I've ever watched. And just so, mm -hmm. so good. That pedigree onto the tax at the end. Oh my God. Oh. And the palette when he flips. Yes. Yeah. Foley flips all over. Oh, and the palette like sticks into yep. his thigh and he's just bleeding. And like, it's a Foley matchup or a Cactus Jack match in this, in this instance. But, mm -hmm. um, and that run with, with Foley, those, when they had the hell in a cell know. and that match, yep. like that to me made triple H go from like the, a heel to like the best heel at, in the business at that time. Oh yeah. Cause when, when incredible. you, he was just credible when he worked with followers. Yeah. And I, yeah, it gives you that credibility. Cause you're like, Oh, this guy's a f asshole heel, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But then when you have those type of matches where you earn it, you earn it, you're getting the shit beat out of your weapons, tax, all these things. You have those and matches. And Foley, by the way, who had a great deal of And it's Foley, who's the legend of those matches. Like, he's the guy. Mm. And you're having this feud with him that you come out on top of and you survive all these matches. It, it gives you, like you said, and you saw that Foley did that with, look, at he did it with Randy Orton. He, he did, did it with it Rocky. With Edge, he did it with yeah, Rock. Like that, I quit. The, match, Foley was moving. that guy. Mm. Foley was that guy where it was like, hey, we got this guy that we want to push. People love you. You're credible because you're hardcore and you're a legend and all these things. We're gonna have them have a match with you, and they're gonna beat you. That was Foley's career. Gonna, yeah, Foley and everyone is gonna win look at that them often. differently because <laughs> they got through you. Foley you know what really I mean? Like didn't win. That often he lost more time. Well, he was a three-time like, champion and was like a total of like twenty-two days or twenty-one days or like something that. like that. He like, he was a guy that we didn't care that he lost nearly every single match that he was in because there was that slight chance that he might win, and we were like, "That's us. We are Foley. Mm -hmm. Foley is God. Yeah. Oh, he's not. He's if, not if God, you, but he's you, pretty damn good, as he would yeah, say. Yeah. If you like, pick, if you pick the majority of the iconic matches of Mick Foley's careers, those, most of them are losses. They're L's. Hell in a Cell. Uh, Street Fight with Triple loss. H. Hell in a Cell loss. with Triple H. Randy Orton. Loss. Loss. Edge. Edge. <laughs> loss. Like, they're, most of them are losses. The only iconic moment, not only, but the iconic moment that you remember of him winning is when he wins the world title. Well, That's the moment where yeah. he finally wins. You know what I mean? But other than that, all the big matches and all the big moments that you remember from Mick Foley, he was usually getting the shit end of the stick. That's usually how that was going. You WrestleMania know? 22 with Edge, that hardcore match with the flaming table. And edge. like it made, made it. Edge. It gave Foley a WrestleMania moment. Yep. And it gave Edge a WrestleMania moment who mm -hmm. Edge was already a moment maker at WrestleMania with the spear with Jeff Hardy and, and other things yeah. that he had done at WrestleMania. Of course, money I in the bank. I think truly solidified Edge as... Main edge. eventer to the edge the we stars. see today. Correct. Yeah. Who, by they the way, that whole thing rated R superstar like actually, that. Mm. We'll talk about Edge in a minute. What he's doing with AJ Styles because that's going to yeah. be something we need to deep dive on in a second. Um, but WrestleMania moments for you and WrestleMania memories, whether it's matches, segments, fucking anything from WrestleMania. 
Um, mm. I've said many times that my favorite WrestleMania of all time is 24. And that has one okay. of... Well, that's Edge and Taker right there, right? Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair, the I'm Sorry I Love Very You, good. is one of the greatest WrestleMania moments. Well, no, no, no. Scratch that. One of the greatest wrestling moments of all time when mm -hmm. Shawn is sent... That match is really fucking good with him. It's very get good. Uh, Okay, I know a lot. I know I bang on about Shawn Michaels a lot, and this isn't a Bret Shawn thing. I defended Bret Hart the other day on Twitter because Bret Hart is truly one of the greatest technical wrestlers of all time. Bell to bell, oh, yeah. there's not a lot of people, many people better than Bret Hart. I'll go out and say that. For what I like, I just like Shawn. Okay, and I'm not saying that that means Bret is bad. It's like one A and one point A. Like it's this, they're the mm -hmm. same thing in a lot of senses. Um, so for anyone that wants to come at me with the Brett Sean thing, I'm not here for that. <laughs> Sean Michaels to me is the ultimate storyteller. You look in Sean's eyes and I don't think there's ever been a performer in the history of wrestling that is better in big matches that is, that can, you can count on more to deliver that emotional reaction than Sean Michaels. Him mm -hmm. and Rick, Rick Flair was 104 at this point. Okay. He was wrestling his last match at the time. <laughs> last wwe match at least yes. it was time for him yes. it was very much time for rick flair to hang up the boots a lot of people think Correct. well a lot of people say sean and brett sean and brett a lot of people say rick flair is the greatest of all time for a great reason mm -hmm. because rick flair is rick and sean are very similar um mm -hmm. sean was just the next step from rick mm -hmm. flair's time it was time to go up to the late 90s and flair was dialing down and sean was dialing up um that's just how it kind of the evolution of wrestling Shawn Michaels and Flair going in that story of that moment, the roar before WrestleMania 24, when he said, you know, the story of old Yeller, it was time to take old Yeller and put him out of his misery. Put him out of him. And yep. Flair slapped Shawn, like Shawn's cowboy hat fell off and he was like old Yeller. And like, I think everyone and their dog, like Stevie Wonder could see this coming of like, this is Rick's last match. <laughs> like the mm -hmm. story was where it was going. If Rick lost, he must retire. It was fun. It was a fun story. But everyone's okay. like, WrestleMania, no matter who he faces, this is the end of Ric Flair. Shawn Michaels is the perfect person to do this with Flair um, because he is Ric Flair. That's who... Yeah. It was the next generation Ric Flair. There was no question about that. So that match is really good. But of course, that oh, yeah. moment stands the test of wrestling time. Like, I'm sorry, I love you. It's so simple. Oh, Flair's, cr Flair's crying. He's already crying. Like, like, he, he's, he's just going, give it to me. Like, like I'm Yella. ready for it. Like, it was, yeah, it was, but it was him. Sean has the emotions. He's emotional. I'm sorry, I love you. I'm sorry. But Flair there, like, he's getting to his feet and he's literally going like this. Like, like I'm ready me. for like, it. Like, end me. End me. I'm ready. I'm ready. I've come he, to terms with pin, it. And he's crying and Sean's crying. He's crying, crying like, yeah, oh, yeah. It's it was, just and then a Sean moment. gives him the little arm hug and probably said, I love you, like, thank you, or whatever was shared between those two. Like, that whole thing is like, yeah, it, it there's got so me. much, there's so many layers involved in it. Like, again, I'm not, I'm not retiring or I'm not old by any means, but like, to play that out as flair. And be like, man, that is a guy who at by the end of that match, he has come to terms with like, yeah, like I want you to put me out of my like end this for me. Like I'm ready for it. Like you can end me. And like so it's just it's just wild. It's wild. That, it's so the, good. That mania, edge and take is at that mania. Um one of the greatest ref moments of all time. Charles Little Nate. Boom, boom, boom. Just boom, that boom. sprint. Yeah, it also had that's a huge ramp. Yeah, Triple H, yeah. Cena, and Randy at that WrestleMania. And a lot yep. of people thought that Randy Orton was not going to win. And he punted Triple H out of a pin and won a triple mm. threat match. And that match is really good. Like, it's a really fun match. Um, there's yep. multiple other things that happened at that WrestleMania as well. But I just like the atmosphere of that WrestleMania. Um, it was just a, it was just a really fun WrestleMania. And I, I don't, I know a lot of people like 24, like, okay. Like that's mm. my personal favorite mania. Wrestling is subjective and yeah. it's just what it yeah. is. Um, is 17, I'm biased. Is 17, your 17, favorite? 17 is great. Yeah. I'm biased. I WrestleMania 14 where stone cold yeah, the era, but I, I know it, it obviously I've watched it. it was in Boston. I was there. That's um Austin Undertaker Michaels, Kane. Right? Yeah. 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 Austin Michaels with Tyson. Austin wins the title for the first time. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Like that was the christening of Stone Cold Steve Austin as the dude. First time Undertaker and Kane ever fought. 
Undertaker had to tombstone Kane three times to beat him, which was uh, nobody kicked out of the tombstone. By the way, nobody. Taker and Kane is probably, in my opinion, the greatest story in wrestling mm-hmm. in wrestling history. Yeah, and that whole lead up to that, where Undertaker refused to hit it, like I'm not fight, I'm not fighting you, bro. Literally, I'm not fighting you. And Kane was like, "I will kill you." Kane's uh, debut, like, will, like in the hell, in yeah. Hell Kane's and- debut leading up to it. All that Paul Barra involved, which has so much history with Taker. I remember the segment on Raw where they beat the crap out of The Undertaker and he came back and Kane did the fireball and Undertaker yeah. walked through it. And he said, I will walk through the fires of hell to fight you so when he fully said, I'm going to fight. It was oh, just like. It's wrestling, isn't oh, it? That's just it was just wrestling. so good. I have goosebumps because I remember being like 13, like, oh my the God. The best thing in the world. Incredible. Oh the my best. God. I've watched WrestleMania uh, 14 before. Um, definitely. Yep. I've watched it. It yep. obviously was before mm-hmm. I was aware of what, what the world was really. Um, that was in 98, seven, 98, 98. 98. Yeah. So 98. So like I was so, really, I was like very, a very significant. It's a significant Austin, WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah. Austin wins the time. I mean, that the Austin's change. the dude, man. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Austin here probably in a few minutes again, almost 20 years later. Um, over 20 years later, 25 years later. Yikes. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was stone cold. You can make an argument. I don't even think it's an argument. Stone cold was the most popular wrestler of all time. Yeah. That's it's not what I believe. It's not, I don't think it is. People might argue Hogan fine, Fuck Hulk but Hogan. stone. <laughs> yeah. Stone cold's the most popular wrestler to ever do it. And that was his moment where he won the title. Like that was, that's his WrestleMania. Um, I also love WrestleMania 30 with Daniel Bryan. That Daniel Bryan WrestleMania it's is so, so good. It's, star- it's bookend. That with- match with Triple H is fucking incredible. Yeah. That is Triple a H very, and Bryan. very The Triple Threat is a lot of fun too that Bryan Triple has. H, Triple Threat was good too. It kind of got overshadowed because of the Taker Shriek thing right before. Okay, I'm going to say something like, right Holy now. like, holy shit, what the hell? It's- Nobody expected that. One, two, three. What, eight years since the streak has been broken now? Yes. So I is will Lesnar go on. the right guy? Yes. Brock Lesnar is I the agree. right guy to do it. You. It may have took some time, but without that, Brock wouldn't have the same finesse that he does now. Yes, he could have won and people would be like, but he still could have been in The Undertaker streak had to end. There was no one more mm. legitimate to end the Undertaker streak than the man he was teasing that he was going to fight in an MMA octagon. Okay? So mm. sh- just like, call it. That moment, yes, it's a very daring mo- moment. It's a very oh, yeah. bold moment. It's... Oh, it's yeah. something that I'll never forget of that reaction because every year you went in like, will the streak be broken? But deep down you went, but you, you, knew you know it it's not going to end. And I, we were all there too. Like even with that third F5, all of us he was gonna kick were out. sitting there going, hey, he's going to kick up. But like you and go every time, like, like, oh, like oh, of every switch in music, of every pedigree, of every spear, of yep. every GTS, of every you Always kicked out. You always went, always oh, this out. is the end. And then you go, but yep. he kicked out. That yeah. moment when that three count hit, I stood up out of my chair and was like, "Oh yeah, what the hell?" Like, yeah. it wasn't anger. Yeah. Well, there was anger, there was sadness, there was what the. All it sorts was just, of things. It, it was, was just, just like what happened. Roller coaster of like Did what that just happened? really happened. But it will go down in wrestling history mm. as the most shocking moment of all time. Yeah, I was like, I mean, there's nothing. There. You, nobody thought that was happening. Nobody. Even if and you then, thought it was happening, you still didn't think it was happening. You still knew it. But you still, in the back of your mind, like you said, we're like, this should have happened. Like, it's not going to end. But it, uh, every all good things must come to an end. Yeah. A lot of people like, he bought agree. Roman and he should, Ro-. no, no, this was no. the perfect- At that moment where Roman, where maybe, and again, The Undertaker is retired now. Yeah. Maybe this Roman would have yeah. been the right Roman to yeah, beat the streak. This Roman. That was that the right Roman? moment at the right time. No, we saw that Roman beat The Undertaker for his second loss, which after the first one, what the fuck does it matter? And like that Roman the next night couldn't say a word in that promo for 10 minutes. He was getting, they were saying, fuck you, Roman, booing Roman. That's one of his best promos ever, by the way. Because he doesn't say anything. Stand, he, does, he doesn't. He just stands there and takes it. And, says, and then this is my yard. And sly smile. This is my yard now. And he leaves and everyone's just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they hated it. Like, it was a good moment. That's like a of, raw oh, Aftermania moment. It's one of his most perfect moments oh, as the baby face. Ro- like, it is so good. But that's when he was um, like, you know when Roman went he, through that period of was like, he was a baby face, but he was kind of a cocky baby face? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
because he was leaning into it, which is what they should have done. They should have the done that from time. the jump. But Not like that now, obviously, Roman's, bullshit. Uh, Roman's, Roman's next level now. He's like, Ro- Hall of we're Fame, going to talk about everything. Roman in a second. But yeah, yeah, that wrestling moment, that the streak is the most polarizing thing in the world. You'll never it's get two people that completely agree on absolutely every single point because yeah, like, no, but I, oh. but I, I agree that Leslie and I think Heyman said it best a while ago, like when it was more fresh. He said. Lesnar is the perfect guy to beat the streak because Lesnar's the one guy that doesn't give a shit that you're angry that he beat the streak because Lesnar doesn't give a shit. Lesnar's like, you're paying me? What am I doing? Winning? Losing? Cool. I don't give a shit. As long as the cat, as long as the check clears, I'll do whatever you ask. So well, Lesnar, for <laughs> yeah, for the most, yeah, like said, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brock still does what Brock do, wants to do, but like, yeah, if, they, if, poor if Dean Brock's Ambrose, like, poor Dean Ambrose, if, Brock, if they're saying like, <laughs> Brock, you're going to lose. And then he goes, no. And they go, Brock, do you want $5 million? He'll probably be like, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But like um, Brock in, in the sense, the, the streak WrestleMania 30 to your point is a, it's a, this, it's a roller coaster of fucking emotions, mm-hmm. but it is really fun. I'll never forget. My poor ladies were on after the streak and uh, yeah, even got, I, who was the biggest diva stand in the world at that point, I was like, even I don't, don't want to watch uh, You don't this. give a shit about this. Like, yeah. No exactly. disrespect to any of poor those. Things. It was a fatal 14 way. Like what the fuck anyway? Yeah. Like, but like also like, I was like, oh, like the lady and that match, by the way, if you actually watch that match from Bell to Bell, it's not. It's not amazing, but it's not awful. They they tried no, their best. But you but can't they, they after that shit. moment. They they probably knew it. Not even grow. AJ they who they screwed, loved. So. They loved AJ Lee. They were like, yeah. not right now. No. <laughs> and no. I understand that. They were in nobody. Who wants to follow the streak ending? Literally nobody could save that. It took Brian a lot to get out there for them to get back in the zone of like even the be- yeah, but even the beginning of that match, the crowd was still reeling from that mm. the, the the aftermath of taker so by the time he won at the end the crowd was ready to explode but like even the first you know the match was great the triple threat but you watch the first 10 first segments of that match it's and just, the crowd is still like not fully with it they're, they're just, just going like, through the motions of like what yeah they're just like do, still like, going through like holy crap did the undertaker really lose <laughs> like did that really lot. happen um yeah i think before we talk about well, I want to get into Mania this year in a second, but just a couple more things. The Seth cash in at WrestleMania 31, a great WrestleMania. Fantastic. Way. Great WrestleMania moment. 31 was really good. Yeah, 31 was a really good Mania. I think a lot of people would probably you'd be reminiscent. We need to talk about last year with um, Bianca and Sasha because mm-hmm. that match was phenomenal, but that moment. The moment. When they're just looking at each other and they're visibly emotional and like, wow, this is a pretty, a pretty big deal. And we're going to talk about the significance of that match and what it means for this year. But that is a really cool moment. The triple threat with Charlotte, Becky and, and Sasha with the new women's championship. I think that will yep. go down. Um, as yeah, Russell, one, as, I was at that one too in Dallas. That was not a good WrestleMania. No, but that match was really good. That match ruled. I also enjoyed Matt Cardona, Zack Ryder getting his moment in the ladder match. That was a good ladder match. Owen, Sami Zayn, Stardust. Zack Ryder. Stardust. Might, oh, well, we might be talking about him in a little bit, but uh, yeah, um, that was a good match. That was, I think, those are really the only two really good matches of the night. Shane obviously jumping off the cell that was, was a, a moment. Was a moment. But that was what um, we, we. That's what we knew from. We're like, Shane's gonna do something crazy because yeah, Shane McMahon yeah. is a fucking maniac. But yeah, I mean, um, Charlotte, um, Sasha, and, and Becky was. Mm, a very, very good and they and they just debuted the new belt on the pre-show that looks it. so pretty the white be- like it was just like okay um, and they said we're not doing we're not doing divas anymore we're doing fuck those that. women's fuck that you know noise. like and i know you like the divas and i like the oh divas no no too, no but i understand but, what the oh that, yeah they were like we're not, not, very we're nice not doing the butterfly women. belt no. we're not doing the divas we're like no. this is the I new belt we're women i wanted like, that for the longest time they shouldn't be called yeah. divas but i just appreciate yeah. that era of women so it was a, um, and brie bella's yeah. last uh, last full-time match as a as a performer and it was technically the rocks last match he beat eric rowan oh yeah in six seconds and like six seconds yeah so technically so two legends on record right two now two legends I have, retiring I, I was live for the rocks last match as of right now Wait till next year, but as of right now. Obviously, uh, Brie Bella's had many matches <laughs> since then, but she officially yeah, retired at that yeah. Mania. I believe Lana's first wrestling match was at that WrestleMania. It was, um, yeah. They had that big... That was the last was Divas match of all time. Yeah. Yeah, it was a multi, multi-woman multi match. Five on was five. A big it was tag like match. total five Divas five five versus the, yes. the true Divas or whatever they were called. That's right. That's um, right. But you and watched then... the last Divas match ever. 
I was that was a significant last Divas match, Fest. last full time Brie match, uh, the Rock uh, first Lana match, last Rock match. You know, maybe it was a better in- WrestleMania than I thought. It was uh, long. Um, was long. The only other moment that I'll there's lots of WrestleMania moments, man. Like Rock and Austin, uh, Rock and um, well, Rock and Austin three times. Rock and Hogan. Rock, Rock and Hogan. Hogan. I was gonna say as much Austin as we and don't. Austin. Like- I just watched this yesterday. Austin and Brett from WrestleMania oh, 13 with the double turn. Where Austin becomes the good guy and Brett becomes man, perfect. Very, very one of the best good, matches of all very time. Very good stuff. Of all time. Yeah. Um, and just a little personal personal moment for me, just because I'm just a big fan of both of these people. But Trish and Mickey at WrestleMania 22, mm-hmm. when Mickey, yep, it's infamous that it doesn't even get shown on the network anymore when she grabs a certain oh, area yeah. of, of Trish Stratus mm-hmm. and, and licks her fingers. Um, you can all do the the pain thing on that one. Um, but that mm. match is really good. And at that point, there'd never been a one-on-one women's championship match that was quite like that. There was like a competitive yep. back and forth. And the crowd in Chicago in hated Trish Stratus and loved Mickey James, who, of course, babyface yep. and heels. Um, Chicago love heels for the most part. Um, but Mickey was on, she was, what, four or five months in? Crazy. We'd never seen a story like this for women, especially going into WrestleMania. You'd never seen story driven elements like that. I had a great story. That story is still talked about today for many good reasons of like. And it was Trisha's mm-hmm. last big story before she was kind of, you know, on her way out. On her way out. Um, yeah. And Mickey's and coming in. <laughs> and she wins. Mickey wins and she wins the belt. And it's like, that didn't happen all the time. <laughs> it didn't happen women. all the time, but expect, yeah, especially with the women, like you said, that was the first one-on-one big match. Women's match. I think they had yeah. women's championship match one on like they had China and Ivory. Like a lot, and- yeah, Alondra Blaze, I think, was in one of the was she in one of the early like nine, ten, eleven uh, like probably there, maybe? but like nothing know. of significance with this much like like that story built since October. That kind of story, like that was a long term main arc of a story, like on the show. Like and it they- was significant time every week and i always get so annoyed about that because just like it was such a good match and then an ending can really just sour Mm -hmm. everything and of course it's edited on the network so if you've never watched i was gonna say you you don't you don't really see the ending that much anymore it's not really it just talked about how mickey james gets the win she does like a chick kick after because she goes for a stratus faction and they get buckled and she just kind of falls and then she does a chick kick but on the network or on the peacock version she just, just does a chick kick, kick and you're like, oh, she yeah. won. But it's still it's still a great match. And uh, again, the story of that match leading into it. I just remember this moment when Trish goes for a stratosphere and, and Mickey grabs her leg and like jumps down off the into onto the outside and like slams her leg and she just leans on the apron and like squeals and the crowd yeah. just erupts. And I'm like, well, for women in that time, if you weren't Trish Stratus or Lita, you weren't getting reactions in Chicago of all places, like because Chicago is yeah. not an easy town. If you're not, if you're like, they did not like Trish Stratus. Poor Trish Stratus didn't do anything wrong to the no. Chicago crowd. They just like, like, this is new. This is fresh. This is something we haven't really seen. Like Mickey was the ultimate thing, but yeah, it's just a moment that I always forget. Is there one more WrestleMania moment or, Oh, well we can't not talk about Shawn Michaels and the undertaker. Cause it is. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's the match that that's the match. So I had, and that was at the time of my life. And I think well, I've said it watching, I had yeah. a very on and off mm. wrestling life. I was in my early twenties and I was like, you know what? I want to go with my friends and let's be honest, try to get girls and yeah, try to, exactly. you know, that's what I want to do. Uh, I'm not going to commit to two, three hours on Mondays. Like I, you know, I kept up with it, but the feedback from that match is what, kind of got me back into wrestling because obviously those were guys that I had watched my whole life, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. And you hear the feedback of like, holy crap, they had a really good match. And then you would hear some people saying it might be the best match of all time type it match. Is, like that's how good it was. Is. And it, pro- it it's up there. It's definitely in the small discussion, the short list. Um, and then going back and watching it and being like, holy crap, that was a <laughs> phenomenal match. That got me to kind of like, all right, I'm going to pay more attention and kind of peek in more. And that kind of was the start of me getting back into a regular viewing of wrestling again. So Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker is the perfect WrestleMania match. It's maybe the perfect wrestling match ever. We're talking about 25, not 26. 26 is significant for other reasons. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's It's fine. But 25 is, is better. Um, Just that, that ending of Shawn doing the moonsault and Taker catching him. And then yep. the tombstone and the the 
like just the kick out, especially of the first two. Oh, where well, the Undertaker makes and that like, face and he's when he's like, just like, oh, he's like laying on him. Kicks out yeah. and then he's just like, Taker's like, what Taker's the like fuck? laying on Sean and he has a look like, holy crap. The there was a little part of me, them? I remember watching that going into that because I obviously I'm a Shawn Michaels guy. Um, and I like the Undertaker. I was like, I don't think Sean is going to win this. Like, I don't think he is. But that kick out, I was like, well, maybe, maybe he is. Maybe this if is. If anybody was, at that moment, if anybody yeah. was going to do it, it would be Mr. WrestleMania, wouldn't it? And it was just like, phenomenal. Like, if, if they both said at that point, like, we're done with wrestling. You'd be like, well, yeah, all right. I understand why you'd be ending at that time. Obviously, they had a little bit more. Well, Sean had a little bit more left in him. Taker had many years. Um, yeah. Maybe not many great years, but he still great had. Great years. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the one. I, he still had great matches with Triple I mean, H. Triple H. And, and then the Punk. one with Punk is still really good. And then obviously it's a Brock really good match. And then the Brock one, he obviously got kind of fucked up, concussed yeah. in, and it wasn't, you know, great. everything it was supposed to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, Taker, I, I thought the end of an era that maybe not so much the, I mean, the match is good. The story in um, that match is the story, like ridiculous. And then at the at the end, when they're all at the top of the ramp, like I thought that would have been a fitting way for the three of them to kind of all together be like, that super we're out. pedigree, that was I, one I jumped time. out of my seat. I, was I like, jumped out it. of my seat. It's over. I'm like, this is over. And then he kicked out and I was like, holy. And the I, way I that Sean been... jumped around and was like. Yeah, like he was like, shit, I just did something did I that do? I shouldn't do? have and it didn't work. No. And like, yeah, because then the he, still has to ref, he just... still has to ref the rest of the match and be partial and fair, even though he was just 100% not fucking partial at all. So it was just but like. he also wasn't yeah, partial yeah. with Triple H. Like he was taking away his weapons because he was like hurt and take it it was just a, yeah. a phenomenal time so end of an era is a good shout as well but let's talk about this Liz wrestlemania for a little bit before we run away um mm. because there's a lot to dive in on i'm just gonna say this charlotte and ronda ain't it and i'm a charlotte flair stan i don't care for that i just ronda rousey is bored and it's it's and ronda rousey has lost every element of showing signs of being great her matches aren't that great her promos are fucking off. Like they're the shits of the shit. They're just awful. Charlotte Flair is someone that I love. You are a Charlotte Flair fan as well. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't like Charlotte, but not even mm -hmm. Charlotte Flair has got me interested in this one, my guy. I'm not no. going to dwell and on this it was too a, much. This was, a, this was a match that Charlotte reportedly was asking. I for. don't know. Like she was adamant, according to reports now. Yeah, exactly. But she was asking, like, I want Ronda. I want Ronda. I, hey, this I, could turn around and they could have a great match. It could, Charlotte Flair. It could, they are both of the talent. Ronda's just it could end up being one it, of the best. Guy. Oh my uh, yeah, it's very God. weird. It's very weird. Get Ronda and, and out to of me, there. To me, it looks like they called her and they said, hey, we want you for WrestleMania. Here's blank million dollars. And she just went, all right, fuck it, whatever. Which is, cool. I don't hate her for that make your money no but you also like make your money but like look like you want to be there yeah, and also doesn't... ronda rousey should not be a baby face let her be a heel it's much better mm -hmm. at least these promos would come across a little bit more like oh you're just being a, a shithead but she's just yeah. like she fucks up everything she's saying and charlotte flair has i think is a great promo but she has a very driven style of promo that that's charlotte flair it's kind of yelly but in a good way yeah. but like it doesn't mesh well with this kind of like nonchalant no. ronda this, rousey yeah this it's, has been it's not good. for me. This has been a huge miss, Flop. and I very, I very much am nervous if this is the main event of night one. Which I know I, they're presenting it that way. I don't think it should be, um, but I think it I will think they be. Should. But I understand the significance understand. of it. Like Royal Rumble winner should main event WrestleMania. You got two nights, two Royal Rumble winners. I understand. That I agree. Concept. I think that's the way it should go. But, but also, I think, I think the best match that you, you can have should go on last. Correct. And I think, well, my all right. Oh God, I'm torn about this. I'm torn about this because the crowd is not gonna. I'm very worried that the crowd, especially after sitting there and you're, if you're approaching hour at the end of hour four, maybe three, four, maybe yeah. five, maybe three or four, four or five with the pre-show. Yeah. true. If you're there, you've seen a lot of wrestling. Granted, it's not the seven hour one day thing, but it's still four or five a hour lot, shows a long lot. time to be at a wrestling show. Um, and the last match you see is a match that is clearly not hitting, clearly not hitting. 
I worry about that. I worry about mm, me too. Just the crowd, the hijacking of the it's match. I worry about whether the match will even be good or not. Who knows? You wouldn't think that we'd be having that discussion with the talent of Charlotte Flair and Ronda to an extent, because the last time, not this time, but when we saw Ronda before, like her a hater, she was pretty fucking good. When and her and Charlotte there. had a great match a couple yes, of years back. Yes. But now I'm just, it's just like, like, it's just not there. We're seeing I would two rather... very different. It's not the same Charlotte Flair and it's not the yes. same Ronda Rousey. Um, so it'll be interesting, but we won't dwell on that too much. It will be what it will be. And it'll be at least interesting from the wrong point of view to see. Mm. Um, something that I am more excited, I think, than anything for is AJ Styles and Edge. This yes. Edge is... Hey, he's got another go. Ultra Bridge. If you're going to change Edge's song, which I don't think you should. However, if you're going to, at least it's an Ultra Bridge song. And I'm like, okay, I can can get behind this Edge. He's a very, mm-hmm. he makes a lot of valid points oh, of yeah. like, hey, I am the best. Mm-hmm. Like I'm here. I've come back after all of this for a reason because I am the best at this. And there's an argument that Edge is doing better work now than he's ever done. His promos, especially, I'm like, a lot of people, when well, you talk about promos in this world, a lot of people don't talk. I'm like, why are people talking about Edge's promos? Like, they are you can tell, phenomenal, no pun intended. You can tell his experience with oh. acting oh, yeah. is like, phew, they've he's, taken he's, his promos oh. to another level. Like the he way just, they zoned you know, in on his and face. And he was always a pretty, he was always oh, a pretty good. A like, once he became a, soul, a single star, he was always a pretty good promo. But I feel like his time away and just he's being not a wrestling Vikings promo becoming anymore. becoming an actor. He's now oh just like, at this different level of just like, this isn't a promo per se. This is like, this is just yeah. a great piece of television. And mm-hmm. obviously him and AJ, there's no way that that won't oh, be. It's gonna be like, no, no pun intended. It's phenomenal. It, pun intended. It's going to be phenomenal. And like, it's going to be, that's the match wise. Oh, there's nothing that's more. the match I'm looking forward to the most of all of WrestleMania. There's nothing that. wrestling wise that I'm looking forward to yeah. more than that. I am excited for Becky and Bianca, which was, I, I was excited gonna... for a real match between them. Those two. Bianca's Becky going to win it back speaking... to back. I think Bianca's taking it. Me too. But, Becky, um, Becky's promo last week on Raw. Unbelievable. Sometimes I sleep on Becky. I'm like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. This woman is phenomenal at speaking except mm-hmm. when she says triple trap match that's funny um but <laughs> she she is i was like that listen wrestling is so nuanced at this stage for me that i'm just like it's just kind of like i know what's coming it's a formula mm-hmm. i'm just kind of doing my own thing i was like hooked i was like listening to every single word yep. that she said and the point was being, it was a very one oh one wrestling thing to say. Oh yeah. It was, yeah, there was it was the it was nothing revolutionary, that. but the way it was presented, like she nailed so, it. So absolutely nailed so it. much fun to watch someone. I'm just like, man, I sometimes forget that Becky is really actually very good at this. And Becky is mm-hmm. um she's just she's phenomenal at what she does. And her and Bianca are gonna have a lot of a lot of fun. Um, obviously, we're excited for Owens and Stone Cold, the KO show <laughs> that definitely isn't going to be a wrestling match. Are we sure about that? Here's my thing. Okay. So, and again, I don't think this will set a good precedent because I do think with Two Night Mania, women should main event one of the nights. Me too. But they but should main event. <laughs> could you start the show with the KO show? get the Austin pop right at the beginning. Everyone's losing their mind. Something happens in the KO show that then later on that night as the main event, it actually ends up being a match. And you go that way. May, not because, and look at, and we know Vince is stubborn and we know Vince is the type of guy that he sees it one way. And if it's the way he wants it, he doesn't give a shit what anyone thinks or whatever like that. But I mean, how can you watch the Charlotte, and I go, I know we're not going to live in it, but how can you watch the Charlotte Ronda stuff and even Vince be like, ooh, maybe they shouldn't be them. You know what I mean? I like, don't know. It's it's a whole thing, but Owens, uh, and, Owens and Stone Cold, be, oh, it should, I, I think it will end up being a match of some kind, but it's going to be physical. Um, that's all that we can say, but that'll be fun. Um, Brock and Roman, not much to say. It'll be, It'll be fine. Be fun. It'll be, It'll yeah, be, be physical. Good. Roman, we're assuming Roman leaves with both with both the belts, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, 
Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville will be a very interesting spectacle because it's Johnny yeah. Knoxville and, and it's and, anything goes too. And Knoxville publicly has said it's it's he's going to do some shit. And he's Sami Zayn shit. is fucking phenomenal. And oh my god, we mom. can't. We're we're just kind of going through the motions here because I want to spend a little chunk of time on what I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, the Raw Tag Team Title Match that's happening. There's like a triple threat. Good for them. It'll be fun. Thank the you. A couple, the, yeah, I love them. I'm rooting for them. Uh, the triple threat a yeah, couple weeks ago on Raw. But no, yeah. Like very, one of the greatest and, tag matches in Raw yes, history. Without question. Like, and I have so. very high hopes for this. I have very high hopes for this one as thank well. Thank you. But yeah, Shush. thank you. Shush. Shush. <laughs> um, oh, good for him. him. He's so good. Um, he's very good. Um, we got a fatal four-way for the women's tag team titles, which honestly has gotten a lot of time on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, it's it's really been the highlight of SmackDown. Those couple of for last the last weeks, couple like weeks, a fatal four way last week yep, and then the week before. Rhea, yep. That tag mm -hmm. match was so good, and then fucking DQ finished. But it was so good. Um, yes, okay. There's some questioning of Rhea and Liv and Shayna and Natalia as a team. I don't see the argument of Naomi and Sasha being thrown together when I'm like, <laughs> no, they have a history though. Team history. bad. Team that bad. was literally how I, Sasha I, came. I, in I actually think they're gonna win. I, I think this. Uh, here's another thing. Sasha's saw never won at WrestleMania. Yeah, she's 0-6. I didn't even didn't Big E winless at WrestleMania as well. Yes, I know he's Sasha not, not going to be there. Sasha's because, the opposite you know, of, of The Undertaker. She is defeated yeah. at WrestleMania. Every year. That's she needs brutal. a win. I think this is the one. Yeah, I think she's I mean, get, yeah, that, great, did you see yeah, that yeah, clip of them? Well, I've posted it fucking 700 times of them dancing <laughs> to Dua Lipa. I'm like, yeah. I don't know why I like this so much. They're just vibing. I'm like, a lot of people are like, Sasha's being wasted in the tag team. I'm like... Clearly, she's having a good damn time. Yeah. She's hanging out. What with else her, is she gonna be like? Yeah, what else? They clearly have the two women title matches already set that don't and involve what, her. Why is the tag the team fuck? title division a step down? Everyone wants the tag team titles to be presented in a better way, so they're giving you a big star in the tag team division, and then you shit on it. So yeah. what the fuck do you actually want? Do you want the tag team division to be presented as this fun thing from a two-time women tag team champion and someone who we love in Naomi? Obviously, there's a history there. Do you really do you want them in there and they want them to elevate it, or do you want them somewhere else and we don't care about it? Make up your mind here, people. Just that's all I'll add on that. But honestly, mm -hmm. that fatal four-way has the chance to be a lot of fun. So, like, yeah. I would assume Sasha and Naomi would win, but it's not out of my element for some reason to say like, oh, the titles will probably end up on Natty and Shayna because that's what WWE like to do. Because yeah. a few years ago at WrestleMania, the Iconics did the, the same Iconics, thing and yes, nobody thought definitely. that they were going to win. No, they got a good pop too. People were excited about that one. That was I cried like a little schoolgirl yeah. who's not yeah. wanting to go to school. Like we all cried. Like this country it was mm -hmm. on our news. Like that's how big that was. That's my favorite moment in WrestleMania history from a personal standpoint is because I've never had that reaction to wrestling before of like just pure mm -hmm. joy. Um, and no one thought they were going to win and they yeah. did. So mm -hmm. I could see it happening again. Um, obviously there's other stuff happening at WrestleMania. I mean, blah, 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 yeah. blah. There's a lot happening. It'll be great. Um, we need to talk about way. this situation because the last time we talked, we didn't know when yeah. this was going to happen. If it was happening, we didn't really understand anything that was going on. I just seen the graphic. Um, and just before recording this, of course, again, we're recording before Raw. So Seth could be saying stuff right now as we're recording about WrestleMania. But there was a segment with Seth Rollins. Well, Seth Rollins has been on a fucking tear. He just wants to get to I, WrestleMania. The poor guy. Like, I feel so bad I, for him. <laughs> I said this in our Love Wrestling Slack chat because I, I shared the video because I laughed my ass. So I, I, oh, I, so good. It was so good. Um, I shared the video. And then afterwards, I said, can we just take a second to talk about how, no, again, no pun intended, how freaking good Seth Rollins is right now. Like, I think arguably, I think you can make an argument that this is the best work of his career. Oh, I can't. I right now, even currently. Argue. I don't even think it would yeah. be an argument. He's he doing, is like he's a next level. He's working with himself right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so is Kevin Owens. So is Sami Zayn to a lot of, uh, you know, to a lesser degree. But um, Seth is working, essentially, we don't know who his opponent is. Um, at this stage, there's a graphic now, like Seth Rollins is going to be in the ring at WrestleMania, and that's when he'll find out his opponent at WrestleMania. Handpicked w by Vince McMahon. WWE Hand has a um has a cool opportunity here to not to swerve us initially of like, we thought it was Cody, but it's it's this person. And then Cody Rhodes, you know, or just have the moment be. I hope a lot of 
reports are saying that a lot of people are pushing for his presentation, that he was like in AEW to be exactly it, the same. In it, I think it has to be. I, think I it hope it be. is. And I think it will be, to be completely honest, but you never know with how WWE operate. Um, regardless, mm -hmm. Seth Rollins tried to get WrestleMania by hosting his own talk show and trying to beat Owens. He lost last week. Edge got involved and hit Styles, which means he couldn't fight Edge. Like Rollins has been scratching and clawing. I don't know why people are, for the most part, people are pretty happy with this story, but for the, this oh, yeah. is boring. But I don't understand how. Like, right. this has probably been. If you can't find entertainment in what Seth Rollins is doing right now, I then I don't think wrestling is for you. Yeah, I'm not. I no, look at Owens in Austin, maybe being the exception of like yes. just because it's Stone Cold. But like that aside, there's nothing. I, like, when I think of WrestleMania, I'm like, oh, it's Seth and it's Co And by the way, Cody Rhodes is ph phenomenal, but like, Seth Rollins is also really good in that match itself, regardless of all yeah. the hype, like Cody and Seth. Oh my God. Yeah. Like I said good. a lot of shit about Cody Rhodes in AEW and I think a lot of us did. Um, yeah. But in a WWE world, that pr character will work better over here. And I'm like, oh, it yeah. works more to a WWE audience than it does to an AEW audience. Um, especially with the roller coaster that it could take. Cause initially Cody is going to be a face. Um, but eventually when that sour is down, he will become a heel. Well, I think he will be initially. I think, he will you, be I a think face. you can, well, he's going to get the pop of course. Like the he's going to get and that raw after mania. The, first, the raw after mania mania. He's going to get that big pop. But I think, especially if you're saying that, like, cause that's what the video was today. And if you have, we're recording on Monday, like Josh said before raw, if you haven't seen the video yet, by the time this is released on Thursday, go see the video. You should. You probably, Vince, they probably showed it 600 times on Raw. Oh my God. On Raw. If you watch Raw, you probably literally saw it 10 times. Yeah. Um, Vince says your opponent, he's picking, Vince is picking the opponent. Mm. So this is a huge moment for WWE. Huge moment a for multitude of reasons. moment too. Yes. For a multitude of reasons. One, Cody coming back is just cool. Um, yeah. And it's a huge, it's a, it's huge. Like it's, it's just huge. But WWE has an opportunity here to show all the performers in AEW. Like that. If you come over here, we will treat you with risk. Like they need to treat Cody. He's a whether you like pig. him or not, he's a guinea pig. whether you think he's a main eventer or not. Bottom line is when he left WWE, he wasn't viewed as a main eventer. And that motherfucker went out there for three years and made himself a main eventer. That's what he did. He's one of the biggest names in wrestling. He helped without him. There is no AEW. We've been through it. Yeah. We don't need to he's coming that. back and he needs to be top of the show. He needs to be one of the guys at the top of the card, main storylines all the time, champion, not far down the line. Like he needs to be treated as a main eventer, as a star of the show. Cause not only will that be good for the product, but it will show other wrestlers who might have a contract up in a year or two years. Like, come to us. We'll treat you. Yeah. Well. Like we'll, we'll treat you right. We'll respect what you did over there and you won't come over here and be riding the pine after two months. Like they need to really capitalize on Cody coming back and they need to do it proper. Cause what's the main thing? Like, Oh, that's exciting. But what, where's it, it going to be stardust in two months? Like that's the rhetoric. Like, yeah, so. we, Oh yeah. Vince will, he'll come back. Vince will treat him like the star he is. And then in six months when he's bored, Cody's going to be, the second match of the show, or he's going to be stardust again, or he's going to be this. You need to not do that because it really affects the future of your company. Because guess what? Not everyone's going to resign with AEW. And if you want new, fresh stars in 2024, and I know it's kind of, he jokes about it in kayfabe, but like in 2024, when MJF is really a free agent, if you're WWE, you got to offer that guy money. You got to offer You have to at least try. Real money. You have to try. I don't think he'll go there, but you got to offer. I don't think he but will if he either. Sees, if he sees you treat Cody Rhodes like shit four months after Cody Rhodes comes back, he's definitely not even going to entertain the idea. No. You know what I mean? But if he sees you treat Cody like the star that he has become, maybe, at least maybe, and maybe not at a guy at MJF's level, but guys, other guys who have left and might want to come back. There's plenty of guys who left who left on good terms, who might want to go back for one last run before they're done or something like that. You got to, Cody is the, like you said, the guinea pig that they need to show like, 
Hey, yeah, we understand you were over there, but like, just because you were like, we're going to treat you like, like you belong, you know? And it's just, it's going to be interesting. They need to do, they need right. to do this. Regardless work. of they what happens to do this work. after WrestleMania, that moment when Seth's standing in the ring. Oh my God. It's and gonna be the that AW crowd news, is, right? is, is Cody, that. Cody. Like if it's not Cody yeah. Rhodes, people are going to be fucking pissed, but I'm nearly, could nearly bet my life on it that it's going to be Cody Rhodes. Oh, yeah. Um, and is that WrestleMania? I don't know if they announced it. I believe that. I, th- I don't think they've announced it, but I would, think that's going to be night two. I think that's going to be I would assume two. because they've loaded up night one yeah. quite a lot. And I think you'd probably separate um, Austin. Austin and Cody. You want the two big the two big returns debut. You know what I mean? The two yeah. big returns you want on separate nights, I would think. Austin's the big, holy crap, Stone Cold's back. And then Cody's the big, holy crap. Cody Rhodes is back. He's separate. I would, I would assume anyway, I, I honestly, I could be wrong. Although, um, although I'm shocked. That oh, they it's didn't Saturday. Separate. Never mind. Is it? All right. I was going to say, I'm shocked that they didn't separate the two main women's title matches. And I they, was they shocked about on that the other. too. I was really shocked about that too. I was like, huh? I thought you would put Becky and Bianca on the second. Because obviously both titles are involved in the one men's match. So you only can, yeah. do, you can't, you and can't And then you have that. the women's tag I, titles on the, the second night. But you, yeah. I thought so you I was have, thinking like you would have maybe like you could have, if they're going to do Ron, whatever, you'd have the other one open night too, maybe. And then you have just, Rock, yeah. Brock and Roman. And I don't know. I was shocked that they just had them both in the same night. It's I just figured it would. You know, I wonder if we'll get anyway. another. It, it could be announced by the time this comes out, but I wonder if we'll get another women's match. There is a lot of women well, they, missing out, um, like Dewdrop and and Nikki Ash, and um, yeah. you know, they like, did announce a couple more. They announced that New Day is fighting mm-hmm. Sheamus and Ridge Holland today. I assume that was going to be a six man before, obviously, the terrible thing that happened to Big E. Yeah, horrible um, thing. But I mean, that yeah. match, I mean, okay. hopefully yeah, that gets, I think that'll end up on the kickoff. There's two I two hour kickoffs on this show, my guy. I know. Yeah, I know. And they're doing the they're doing the Andre the Giant Battle Royal on SmackDown like they did last year. So that's not on and the show. Why isn't that on the kickoff? No idea. Why isn't the Intercontinental you, Championship you have, on the kickoff? You, why there's no intercontinental championship match. There's no United States championship match. There's a lot of women not on the card. There's a lot of men yeah, not on the I card. Don't I don't uh, know if they're going to end up. They did it last year. They're going to end up treating this SmackDown like it's WrestleMania. part of WrestleMania. And it's that, like, though. but it's not. It's, it's not. not. I'm not probably going to watch nights. that SmackDown. I don't understand how you go from one night of WrestleMania to two nights of WrestleMania and you still can't fucking fit everybody you want to fit on the card. That you have to take the SmackDown before and be like, yeah, let's throw some matches that we should be able to fit on a two night show with two hour pre shows. Yeah, let's do it on SmackDown. It's like you telling me you couldn't have a women's battle royal on one of the pre shows. Well, just one like night just the, at least in a those men's two. battle royal. Yeah, like, just get everyone what? their WrestleMania payday. Yeah. I'm a big proponent. exactly. I, I, I don't know. It's bizarre. Whatever, I guess. Things, but but we're ready. All, we're ready. We're ready for WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. And all in all. I'm kind of, you know, there's a couple mania matches, ones we didn't mention, like poor Drew McIntyre. Like him and Happy Corbin, that that should be on SmackDown. You should put that on SmackDown and have the Battle Royal be on WrestleMania. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just the builds have been whatever. Uh, but all in all, I think we're going to, after Sunday, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be more pleased than not yeah. with how WrestleMania turns out. Especially That's how I feel. One. I feel optimistic about Especially it. Especially yeah. night one. Night one is loaded. Night one should be good. But last year, I thought night one was very be- very much better than mm. night two as well. So mm-hmm. way better. But um, but it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're all geared up for WrestleMania. We'll be back next week, next Thursday mm. at nine PM. It won't be Australian Central Daylight Saving Time because Daylight Saving is ending for us as it just started. For, it's it's a whole fucking thing thing. But it will be nine PM Australian Adelaide time. So blah 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 blah. You'll see it when you yeah. see it. Um. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, stay posted to our Twitters. It's all over the screen for WrestleMania mm-hmm. tweeting and all of that kind of stuff. We'll be watching along. I have a house full of people, which is going to be fun because you don't really get that a lot with wrestling. So I'm going to be watching with people and I'm going to just kind of be enjoying WrestleMania as I'm sure you'll be enjoying WrestleMania and talking WrestleMania oh, yeah. and, and whatever it else may be. Um, I have to link your, uh, put your Twitch on the graphic at some point too. Yeah. So. Is it the yeah, same as... I'm going to... 
It's the same as my Twitter. So Joseph yeah. underscore Poolin Jr. So just so, remember yeah. that, guys. But I'll put it yeah. in on the graphic for next week because I've already listened to yeah. the recording. Um, but hopefully for that, this will be released on Thursday, your time. So Friday Friday afternoon, my time, Eastern Standard Time. So whatever that would Saturday be. Saturday morning, guys. Saturday morning. And watch it. Uh, that's the goal. The goal is we'll be on there talking some wrestling. There's a big video game that I play called MLB The Show. It's a baseball mm-hmm. game. It's dropping on Friday. So I figured I would fire that puppy up as the first stream at some point Friday afternoon after the shoot job. We'll talk some WrestleMania, have a good time, come shoot the shit. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So yeah. Yeah. That's kind of my plan. And we'll be, uh, I'm sure we'll probably talk WrestleMania next week. Um, But, you know, we're going to have some cool times. Stay posted because... We're trying to work out when's going to be best to record this show. So maybe the show will come out a little later in the week. I'm still trying to put together. I'm like I said, I'm moving house. So like, just bear with me. It is not JPJ. It is completely on me. (laughs) Just trying to work out everything with life is moving. at a pretty rapid pace. And I'm just like trying to stay afloat. Um, But everyone knows when it's, when you're moving house, it's a fucking stressful time yeah, so like the amount moving. of content that i produce over the next month i'm sorry i'm going to be doing because there's going to be some time where i don't have internet access just it's just natural when you move it always takes a little bit of time to get everything mm. sorted and apologies there's just some things more important than streaming or recording this show or something like that when it comes to this kind of stuff like I'm not just working on my schedule. I'm working on my family's schedule who are helping me move. Like when they say it's time to start packing stuff, I would just be like, yeah, no problem. Okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I've just exactly. got to do this because yeah. I need to take all the help I can get. Um, I haven't moved in nearly seven years. So it's I, the last time I moved, Move. I was literally like 19 years old. So I'm like, yeah. oh, boy. Moving like, is uh... it's just a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's just a lot. a lot. Once it's over, it's good. But the lead up and the day, de- it's just. Oh, I can't wait to set up my house because I've got a dedicated oh, yeah. stream room. Like I won't be in this big That's open awesome. space. I'll actually be in a yeah. room. My lighting will be all all rigged up. I'm like, I'm excited yeah. for that. Um, of course. But like, I'm. But the process of getting to that point is like daunting almost. You know, it's like. It's even just thinking about it. I gotta, I'm just like. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Oh like I got to unpack every, like I got so much shit. And like oh, that, just no. that time and I'm still at work over the time. Cause it's also Easter, which is I'm retail. So it's, it's a crazy season oh, yeah. at work. Yeah. So like, it's mm-hmm. like, it's just, it's just, um, <laughs> it's a lot, but like, I'm just smiling through it and I'll get to the other yeah. side. So yeah. I move on April 20th, guys. So on April 23rd, uh, April 21st and 22nd, that's when you can talk to me again and be like, you good? I'll be like, I'm fucking fine now. I'm, I'm in my house and I'm just unpacking at this stage because setting it up is a is a beautiful time. Yeah, that's but, the fun part. But that's like the fun part. getting all of my stuff out of my house, I'm like, but wait, I need to use that no wham pun intended toaster um, when I uh, like get that. Yeah, guys, I wasn't going to bring that up, the but like, fuck, what, the fuck, what, what the fuck? What the fuck, man? We thought what you were are you the good doing? ones, guys. Yes, and that passive-aggressive response statement thing where it's like, oh, I just went off to buy a toaster for the weekend. It's like, no, you posted that, then you dipped because you knew yeah. that would fuck people off. And like, what it's, oh, we don't, like, I'm a good man in good, that's fine. If you want to be religious, that's no problem off my back. But when you're saying it shouldn't offend people, it's like, well, no, actually what stands behind that sick, that's that shirt and that design is racism and homophobia and transphobia and being a bigot and being sexist. And all of these things stand behind that design. So you knew what you mm-hmm. were doing when you posted that you knew that there was going to be backlash and this whole statement thing, you just doubled down on being kind of just morons. I've removed my merch store from there. I'll figure that out when I need to figure that out. But I don't want to be hosted by a site like that. And not only that, on top of everything, when pro wrestling tees were going through their things, you were love roasting people and you were like, let's roast them. Let's get, let's be social media. Oh yeah. They said it in the statement today. Yeah. They like, Uh, in the statement, they were like, oh yeah. You getting roasted. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but now when people are doing it, you, you're like, oh, justly. Oh no, dog! No, you just don't. No, nobody can. And it's the typical. And like they, they use, they, ver- they literally they use said, words like anti woke, and they they were using ant. They used the word. They said racism was a buzzword. They said yeah. that. I'm not making yeah. that up. I'm not exaggerating. Oh, no. In the sentence, it said racism is a buzzword, like anti woke and and homophobia and all of these. And I'm like, your racism, racism is not a buzzword, my friend. It is. Ugh. You're being a racist. That's not that's not being like cancel cult. 
being a racist is not cancel culture. I will be the first to admit that cancel culture can take things to the extreme oh, sometimes, yeah. but when it's yeah, justified, it works. And racism is a thing to be canceled over. And I'm not saying he's a racist or this person running. I'm what I'm saying is that they're implying that things like bigotry and racism and sexism are buzzwords when no, mm -hmm. that's called being Actually, a sexist and being yeah. a racist and Correct. being a bigot. There's a difference, Correct. my friend. There's, there's a difference. thousand percent. Yeah. I, uh, very disappointing. I would say very disappointing. And, you know, cause we, and again, we, we, we have been using them with love wrestling too. I believe we're, we're making decisions on that know, side yeah. too. I'll would, leave that for yeah, whatever. For um, <laughs> yes. But we were, we, like you said, I we thought they were the good off. guys. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah, we were, we would be, I gave them a hard like, on great the size Twitter of a follow. Fucking... They got a good tweet, great Twitter presence. They're funny. They're this, they're that. And you saw all that shit. And sometimes, you know, you don't know everything about somebody until you know everything about somebody. And we don't know everything about them, but we know it. You could not read the room worse. The whole you weekend. You could not read they, the rooms. They went brutal. the whole weekend and they, listen, calm the fuck on. You're telling me that you went away on holiday and you didn't open your phone. Okay. Yeah. I and now, and even at the end of the statement, they're like, we're deleting all our social medias. If you want to do this, you can email up. Fuck off. Well, I am like, not the... I'm, I'm not. It's not a good look. And it's like, not, it's listen, not a good look when this isn't us sticking up for pro wrestling tees, but yes, no. pro wrestling tees had an awful time with a data breach and they were awful. They handled it awfully. Yeah. But one thing we can't say is that they're racists. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, and you even said it when we first started talking about it, like, do I individually know that those people that run Wham are? No, right. they they very well might not be. But if your response is a passive is aggressive way, they have which was passive aggressive, saying, "I fucking hate oh, I'm not basically I'm not falling for this cancel." And they're like basically like bullshit. I'm listening to you, but shut the fuck up. That's basically, basically what I yeah. heard, and I'm just like, yeah, but you're not, you're not, you. But you, you say don't, you stand for all these things like you're. You're pro Black Lives Matter and you're pro LGBTQ and you're pro all of these things. But then that design right there, what it symbolizes is that actually you are not, you are not these things. <laughs> Correct. And when you're saying that someone, I'll speak from my perspective, you say you're all these things, but then you turn around and say that shouldn't offend you. I'm like, but that design stands for all the things that I don't like. They're mm -hmm. saying that I actually, for one thing, do not matter. Because that design symbolizes anti-gay. And I'll just speak yeah. from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. a right to be offended by that because I put doodles inside of me. Yeah. Therefore, I can be offended. And who are you mm -hmm. to tell me what I can and can't be offended about? For your information, yeah. bozo. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. But that's my no, opinion. And they are entitled to their beliefs and I'm not, I'm not attacking their beliefs and being faith and all of that good 100 percent, you're entitled to that but also don't say that you are these other things when your designs on your own store which they're saying oh we allow anyone to put no no but that's your store you have a right to controllably like okay you're entitled to this design and you're entitled to this but we don't want to host this on our website so you allowed that to happen you posted it and then said deuces and then went out and said shut the fuck up uh, yeah. i don't fucking know I'm going to leave this in the very end of this for a reason. <laughs> if you yeah. want to listen to it, go, be my guest. And obviously if you're listening to this right now, you've listened to it, but that's just where my opinion is as someone who dealt with Wham, a lot of us dealt with Wham and they were, yeah. we thought they were great and all of this kind of stuff, but whatever. In, in, yeah. in, too long. Didn't read. Do? Shut the fuck up. Wham. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But on that Absolutely. note, we will be back next Thursday. Probably. Yes unless we change some things around, but you'll know mm -hmm. it'll be back next week at some point. Um, but yeah, it's WrestleMania. We enjoy WrestleMania. Enjoy the festivities of not just WrestleMania, but all the other wrestling that's going on this weekend. Yeah. All the uh, there is a, you know, there is a stand and deliver. No, they don't call them takeovers anymore, but there is Saturday after. I know you have, you have removed yourself from the NXT. I'll be sleeping. World. It's 3 a.m. Yeah. Oh, it's 3 a.m. for you, but uh, for the East Coast people, it's at noon. So that WrestleMania Saturday, you, you got a big in. event right at noon, and then you get a couple-hour break, and then we're going right into Mania Night 1. So that's a 
Yeah. It's a big wrestling day for that's actually something Americans. that's very much changed. Is um, I've removed myself completely from yeah. NXT completely yeah. because fuck that, <laughs> it's just not it. Yeah, yeah, it's not fun. You know, no. But anyway, yeah, we're we're happy little campers. We'll keep you posted on everything that's going on. Again, enjoy WrestleMania, all that. Follow us on socials. You know where to find us. You know what we're doing. All mm-hmm. of that kind of good stuff. Our socials have been on the screen this entire time. Like, share, subscribe, click the bell. What else do you got to say on YouTube? All that stuff. Leave a comment. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> you know, all the, all the normal yeah. YouTube stuff. And, give um, us all the love. Just give us all the love. Yeah, yeah. do that. So till next week, friends, we're out of here. Goodbye.